in Muncie, Indiana. Kirk, speak your mind. Hi, Bob. Hello, Kirk. This is weird. It's the first time I've ever been on. Only the second time I've been on that I've actually been able to watch you live. So uh, all right, it's strange. But you made a comment the other night, and I think it just went a little too far. All uh, right. I agree with uh, most of what you have to say on the public school issue, but you said that all teachers, you seem to go out of your way to say all teachers were evil. Is yeah. that? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, you know, all teachers, and I probably, I probably pushed the figure a little harder than I should have, but hyperbole is a, an effective figure of speech. Like saying that our nation is, mm -hmm. right? Our whole nation has gone over to the liberal perspective. I mean, statements like that, or all of Judea went out to John to be baptized. Well, the reason I brought it up is because I have a mother that's a public school teacher, and she's a Christian. Yeah. Uh, and I would think, you know, I've argued with her about the public schools before. Yeah. But uh, I would say that some school teachers are evil. Those who are teaching condom use, those who are teaching evolution, they're willingly teaching things that are against the Word of God, and other teachers are, are maybe ignorant to the big picture. Yeah. Now, um, you may have someone who is a good person because God has forgiven them, mm -hmm. but they may do something wrong. They may do something that, in and of itself, that is an evil thing to do. Right? It's a sin. Right. Right? And so, if you have a, a Christian friend or relative, mother of all things, <laughs> your mom. Sorry about that, Kirk. You have uh, your mom who's a teacher, and any Christian teacher who argues to defend the public school system is doing a very evil thing. Well, let me just say that my mom, honestly, I got into this with her, and she honestly believes it's the kids that have changed. She says that she's teaching the same way she did, and she's 58. She's going to retire at the end of the year because right. she's fed up with it. But she honestly thinks that God was allowed in school, okay, uh, when she first began. And yeah. she thinks she's teaching the same way she always has. She doesn't see a big change. And and in Indiana, the schools and the county are not as at the level of decay they are, say, in Denver, inner city Denver or Muncie. Right. Now, of course, the kids have changed. They're dysfunctional today in, in public schools. You got teachers who say they can't hardly stand to be in the classroom. But let's not let the tail wag the dog. Did the kids change and change the system or did the system change and change the kids? Which came first? I, I, well, obviously, God being taken out of school has had a tremendously negative impact over well, the last 30 years. Well, right. God is against the law in the public school system. But in a way, that's almost a favor. They almost did us a favor by making it clear where they stand. Because even 10 years before that, even when they still could pray and have the Ten Commandments in the schools, it was still essentially a godless education system. And the government does not have the right or the ability to educate and rear children. Well, I've seen curriculum, oh, I don't know, it was a Christian show that from 1947, where they were teaching the Bible in, in public schools, even in Dallas. Yeah, I have, there's a caller right now from Sand Springs, Oklahoma, Matt, who says he has a public school textbook with the Ten Commandments in it. I'll go to him next. Well, I just wanted to say my mom is so fed up because she has to keep lowering her standards, and she was actually reprimanded by the principal because she failed nine students. And uh, she's just uh, pretty lowering of the standards because the kids simply can't meet them. And, uh, Kirk, over the years, do you think there have been parents who have been comforted by having their kids go to your mom's school because they've heard she's a Christian? Yeah. See, that is the deceptive lie of the Christian public school teacher. It gives a false sense of security to parents, thinking, oh, well, my Johnny will have a Christian teacher next year. Well, you know, she knows other teachers. They, they, they take kids to Christian rock concerts out at Taylor University. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, if they, if, you know, if a teacher is doing everything that person can to save those kids in the context of that school, mm -hmm. and they're warning the parents that the school and the curriculum is dangerous, and they should try to save their kids out of the school, then that teacher would, would I think, qualify for they're not doing something evil, even though there's a public school teacher, you know, who's a Christian. But I 
I know one person in all the country that I've met that I think maybe qualifies for that, that doesn't put her career first at all. And she, with abandon, goes ahead and attacks the school system, the wickedness that they put forth to these kids, and she ministers to the kids. My mom is really ignorant about certain things. Like, you know, there was this movie China Cry. It was on Trinity Broadcasting. And she said, well, gee, I, I'd like to show that to the kids. And I said, well, you better not. The ACLU will come in and, and fire you. But she, she's just unaware of, of what's going on. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of too bad. But she yeah. thinks you're, you're a, a fanatic because you took your – I sent her those NEA resolutions. They came from me. And they came from her, actually. You hit a home run with that, Bob. But, what, uh, hey, Kirk, I want to hear about that. Could you hold on one sec? Yeah. All right. I wanted to hear about this from Kirk. Let's see. Hey, Kirk? Kirk, you there? I think I can still hear you. Okay. Hey, uh, Kirk, so you sent me those NEA resolutions that I read on the air sometime back? Yeah. And oh. you got them from your mom? Yeah, I stole her NEA magazine and cut them out and sent them to you. <laughs> oh, man. And so then what happened? Well, she said, uh, well, that doesn't sound like my school. They don't do this stuff in my school. They don't talk about homosexuals. They don't, uh, you know, and, and in her school, to be fair, they, they talk about sexual abstinence only. They don't teach condom use. So well, that, that's pretty neat. But, uh, you know, that's that's not long for this world, because you know, every year there are fewer and fewer schools, uh, public schools that tow that line. Well, th that's why I'm saying the level of decay is not as apparent at a county school in Indiana as it would be at a city school in Muncie. I mean, I, I actually substituted for a few months and went to the city schools in Muncie. And they're a zoo. And this was a, a few years back. They're a zoo. Yeah, they, I mean, the kids are just out of control. I mean, if you're a substitute teacher, forget it. But uh, and sh but she doesn't see the level of decay. She she doesn't see um, how she doesn't think the NEA resolutions apply to her school. Right, but she has to recognize that uh, they are the official positions of this huge teachers union. And a majority of the teachers there did vote for the the resolutions. Yeah. So how does she respond to that? Does she at least admit that the NEA then is inherently evil? Well, she said she disagrees with the resolutions, but but she, she doesn't, doesn't want to. But she doesn't want to blame anybody for it. Well, she. I mean, you said all teachers are evil. I. She said I've never met one that's been evil in my life. Right. So. This is called severe denial, and her position is generally the Christian position. And uh, well. Well, you, you know, if, if they just if somebody just watches you for a little while, they, you know, they might get the wrong idea. It takes a little time to watch the show, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, you know, we've mentioned this on the air recently, Kirk. Uh, it, Jesus was intentionally offensive with people at times because it's real good to set the battle line, draw it so that everybody knows where it is, and then let people take sides. Well, I made the mistake when I was arguing with her of uh, of getting into specifics on the NEA resolutions. I should have asked her, is the education system godless and is that bad? And I think she sh we would have progressed from there. I did get her to agree that lack of discipline in the public schools is, is bad. And Well, and you know what? To the teacher in the teacher's union, that's only bad because it's hard for them to perform their duties. But lack of discipline in the public school translates into a lack of success in the lives of the public school students. I mean, it hurts those kids. They're being trained to be irresponsible and disrespectful. Yeah, it's sad. Well, I just sent a, I, I wrote you this in a letter. I just sent you a, a video out to a couple of my cousins of your show, highlights of your show. Uh-oh. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what they think of you, Bob. All right, Kirk, thank you very much. Sure, Bob. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, there's a tape lending library, uh, in effect, nationwide, hundreds of, hundreds of sites that are making tapes of this program and mailing them around the country, in many cases around the world. 